In this second lecture, I will deal with, uh, this is going to be a rather brief lecture, talking about concepts about metabolic rate and oxygen consumption. And I, I, I'm going to bring some concepts together. Uh, after all, you have actually been measuring oxygen consumption in the laboratory, so you already got the feeling for some of these ideas. And this is basically what this is showing. Metabolism can be measured with relatively simple methods. And the relatively simple method that you even have used on yourselves is actually to measure oxygen consumption. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Well, you can place an animal in a chamber, and then by monitoring basically the concentration of oxygen coming into the chamber and the concentration of oxygen coming out of the chamber and knowing the flow rate through the chamber, you can calculate how much oxygen the animal is using. Mm -hmm. Notice that this is, uh, I'm talking about metabolic rate, but what we are actually calculating here is oxygen consumption. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, this we can do in any animal we want. There's some beautiful studies done in elephants using basically garbage uh, cans here. Mm -hmm. The larger the animal, the larger the container. That's the only thing you need. Mm -hmm. uh, how are, how is oxygen consumption related to metabolism, metabolism, metabolic rate? There is a, a single or a direct relationship between them. Of course, metabolic rate indicates the energy that is used. And that's what you see in this procedure here. Because a molecule of glucose requires six molecules of oxygen to produce six molecules of CO2 and six molecules of water, plus some energy that is not indicated here, right? So basically, the breakdown of, of one molecule of glucose produces a certain amount of energy. Metabolic rate is energy. If we want to know metabolic rate, we can do it directly. How? Measuring energy. How do you measure energy? Well, it's tricky. I can tell you, I can give you an example. You can find it in the textbook as well. But it's tricky. It's easier to measure something. It's easier to measure metab metabolism indirectly. How can you measure metabolism indirectly? Well, very easy. You measure how much oxygen is used. Or you could also measure how much CO2 is produced. Or you could see how much metabolic water is produced. Either way, you actually are indirectly making an assessment of energy, making an assessment of metabolic rate. I would say that for the most, the most common method used to estimate metabolic rate is actually measuring oxygen consumption. But there are some relationships that you need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. and this actually comes from two tables from your book, in which what you see is that the amount of heat produced, the amount of energy produced per amount of oxygen or per volume of oxygen or per volume of CO2 varies within, with different uh, types of food. For example, if we take carbohydrates, carbohydrates actually yield 21.1 joule per milliliter of oxygen. How much CO2? Exactly the same, 21.1 joule per milliliter of CO2. That means that the relationship between oxygen and CO2 is constant in this case. That goes back to this equation, right? Six molecules of oxygen produce six molecules of CO2. That's what you see here. However, and this is very interesting, lipids don't yield the same amounts. In the case of lipids, you actually produce 20, around 20 joules per milliliter of oxygen, but actually the ratio for CO2 is 27.9. So this is a slight disagreement here. And the same is true for proteins. What does this mean? This means that if we are actually monitoring oxygen consumption in this animal, depending on what this animal is using as the energy source, we would obtain different values. If this elephant is only using carbohydrates as the source of energy, we would get one value of metabolic rate for the same oxygen consumption. But if this elephant was actually using lipids, we would get another one. That makes things a slightly more complicated. But that's what we have to live with in terms of having an easy method. Notice, however, that if you actually measure both oxygen consumption and CO2, we can then get information on what type of energy, on what type of energy the animal is using. 
And then you, we can make calculations back on metabolism. And this is what's called the respiratory quotient, the RQ value. The respiratory quotient has to do with the ratio between oxygen consumed and CO2 produced. And of course, the RQ for carbohydrates is one. You produce as much CO2, volume-wise, as oxygen is used. For lipids, it's closer to 0.7. For proteins, it's closer to 0.83. And this is an important concept that we will actually practice and use in our problem session tomorrow. The idea that different types of food, different types of nutrients, actually ha give you a different relationship between CO2 and oxygen, and therefore uh, can alter, modify slightly the metabolism, the calculations of energy that you can make. What are the different measurements of metabolic rate that we know of? In this course, we have already talked about some of them, but let's start with the basal metabolic rate. The basal metabolic rate is actually the stable rate of energy metabolism measured in mammals and birds, so we are talking about endotherms, under conditions of minimum environmental and physiological stress. In humans, it's claimed that basically basal metabolic rate can be obtained in a situation after feeding, long after feeding, because remember that there is a specific dynamic action, there is an increased oxygen consumption after feeding. So in a neutrally digestive state, if you want to put it this way, and also a neutrally thermoneutral, uh, a thermoneutral environment, an environment in which we don't have to produce heat, or we don't have to waste energy to cool our cells down. That would be the basal metabolic rate. And it refers to the basic costs of life, the cost of maintaining the machinery of our body that our heart pumps, our brain thinks, our kidneys, our kidneys filter. Basal metabolic rate. In other, in non-endotherm animals, we talk about the standard metabolic rate. And that has to do, that we uh, abbreviate as SMR, and that, that has to do with the animal's resting and fasting metabolism. Again, animals that are not digesting, animals that are resting, they are not moving, they are not exercising, at a given body temperature. The difference between a standard metabolic rate and basal metabolic rate is that for a standard metabolic rate, we have to define at which temperature it was obtained. Because this is for ectotherms, animals that allow their body temperature to fluctuate with environmental temperature. So, of course, if we are looking at a fish, a fish at 5 degrees has a different consumption, has, has a different metabolism than at 10 degrees. But we have to define SMR at 5 or at 10 degrees, respectively. Then we have the resting metabolic rate. Resting metabolic rate is the metabolic rate obtained in animals that are resting, but in uncontrolled conditions. Meaning that these are animals, these resting metabolic rates, we have very little control over what the animal is doing. We know that the animal is not exercising extensively. We know that the animal is not digesting foods. But we have very little control if the animal is moving more or less. The animal can be walking around, moving regularly, but nothing with making it strenuous. That's what we call resting metabolic rate. Field metabolic rate is similar to the resting metabolic rate in consideration, but these are actually the metabolic rates obtained in field conditions. In field conditions, using the doubly labeled water technique. This doubly labeled water technique, it's a very relatively simple method uh, in which an animal is actually injected with doubly labeled water, and then after a period of time, that can be days or weeks, the animal is recaptured, another blood sample is taken, and then you can calculate the metabolism, the metabolic rate of this animal over this period of time. But of course, you capture the animal, you inject, you release. You have no understanding of what the animal has been doing, and this measurement that you get is an average measurement over night and day, over animals, or if this animal is running or not, you have no control. But this is what we call the field metabolic rate. The metabolic rate that this animal has in the field. Many times the field metabolic rate is not particularly useful for a physiologist, because we want to understand what's going on, but it's much more useful for ecologists, 
that want to have ecologists don't care what's going on on a minute by minute basis, but they want to have an appreciation of the whole energetic budget of this animal, of this individual. And finally, we have the maximum metabolic rate, the MMR, which is the highest metabolic rate that an animal can sustain aerobically. And you know how to do that, right? Basically, you put this animal into exercise. One can argue which is the best exercise, but in, one, in humans, for example, static bicycles would be one common way. But any other way that actually you have to increase metabolism can be used in terms of defining MMR, maximum metabolic rate. Any questions?